Hey everybody, this is Better Building with Buck, episode 9. Uh, my name is Rhiannon. And I'm Jordan. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking to you about a spooky haunted mansion in the Halloween spirit um, called the Starrett Mansion, um, which is located in Port Townsend, Washington. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through a couple of brief, uh, I guess, paragraphs of knowledge. Um, we're going to start with uh, the location, um, where it's at, sort of a small history on the mansion itself. We're going to talk about the interior uh, as well as the exterior sort of architecture of the building. And then we're going to go into the hauntings of the building um, in, the in the spirit of <laughs> Halloween. So, uh, yeah, I guess let's get started. Um, I'm, no, I'm 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 excited that we end up getting to have a little bit of fun this uh, episode, and and we get to do it in with some architecture and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm excited that uh, everybody's here, and hopefully they enjoy this episode and a little bit different take on the regular podcast episodes. Yep, definitely. If you spin or you twist horror and architecture together, it's like my dream. So <laughs> I feel bad because some days I'm not as enthused to work, but when Jordan uh, suggested this task, I was really enthused to research it. <laughs> Um, great. Okay. So, uh, just this slideshow is more so just for my reference of reading through, um, doubt you'll be able to see it on the screen anyways, but we'll pop some pictures up yeah. as we go along. Yeah. Um, Our, and could... yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we'll add some images and if we start talking and pointing, um, hopefully we, we do all right on that when we can kind of convert that into seeing that as images. And if you're listening, well, Tough beans. Uh, look at it on YouTube, and yeah. and um, it will be make a little bit more sense. Yep, totally. There's like tons of pictures online, um, and it's the Starrett Mansion or the Anne Starrett Mansion. Um, if anybody is just listening to this, um, you can go and take a look on the internet. Um, cool. Okay. Well, for starters, let's chat location. So I was pretty blown away when I found the location of this because it's actually really close to us here on Vancouver Island. Um, and sorry, I just want to go back a little bit too. Originally, we talked about going over the Winchester Mansion, which um, I'm sure many of people have heard. It's kind of, you know, the haunted house of, um, I guess... Most covered? Yeah, like the most covered haunted house. You know, you see it on lots of Halloween podcasts over the years. So we kind of started with that research. It's a really funky, cool house. There's some cool stories behind it and stuff. But we... Kind of, I scrapped it right away when I found this mansion, seeing that it was so close to us and how beautiful it was. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say you're not getting the Winchester, you're getting a, a nice niche mansion that's not covered a lot here. Um, so, first off, location. Okay, so um, it's a quaint historic town that's uh, located uh, a little bit, never eat shredded wheat, east of Port Angeles. So, Port Angeles, you can take a ferry from Victoria here on the island to Port Angeles, and then you just drive a little bit to Port Townsend, where this mansion is located. Um, so it's filled with tons of boutique hotels, shops and pubs. It's really quaint. It's really lovely for visiting. It's a, it's a tourist attraction. And like Victoria, you know, because these were port towns, so there was a lot of trading going on. Mm. You know, they developed quickly and more so than other cities um, in the Pacific North Northwest did, um, which means that they are also severely haunted, being, you know, some of the oldest towns in the Pacific Northwest. There's a lot of ghost stories. Like, you, you'll find Victoria is, is I think, one of the most haunted cities oh, interesting. in Canada. Oh, cool. Yeah. So just something to kind of take note of. We're not very far from here, so... So there is a bit of a dark history to the town as well. Um, during the war, there was a series of tunnels built underneath um, the city, uh, which they now use for shops and storage and such. But um, there's oh. also, um, there's been a lot of ghost sightings and entity sightings and quite a, quite a few stories. Dark history lie within those passages underneath the town. Ooh, um, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm not going to go too far into that. I'll let you kind of do further research on that if you'd like to. We'll, we'll go into the mansion more. But um, like I said, it's only, it's a short distance from us. So about 4.5 hours, 4 hours away. Um, and its location within the town is actually really cute too. I, I popped it into directions and 
It's a four minutes away from the Port Townsend Ferry Terminal. Um, so really sort of like in the thick of it, um, you've got ocean views from this mansion on the second story, which I'll cover more once we get into the exterior and the interior. Um, but definitely take a look at Port Townsend and how adorable this town is. It actually really reminds me of uh, the island quite a bit. Um, next, sorry, and Jordan, did you have any questions or anything um, to add about well, location? Well, yeah, I, th I thought that it was, it was kind of... Interesting, because um, I think it was my aunt that actually had just like shared with me Port Townsend. That's so cute. Only maybe half a year ago, and yeah. it was I have it in my phone as like a reminder to do list, kind of figure out more about it and take an adventure there. Because she said it was super fun, and and like I looked actually up at some hotels that there, and they're fairly reasonably priced. And yeah, but it, to add this to the part of the journey would would be. Uh, fun little trip and like what you know it when it's like a staycation compared to these you know big elaborate trips like obviously it's there, there's going to be a, a substantial cost to it but you know it's you're not going from here to it's not it's not like an international yeah sort of destination or it's i just see what you mean for sure um yeah maybe do it in you know f four days instead of totally yeah a long weekend keep it affordable because yeah. it's so close to us it still kind of gives us the feel of home as well um yeah and that's gonna lead me i guess not into the next section but um this house is actually currently a boutique hotel so huh. if you are planning a trip to to port townsend you can book in this mansion if you dare. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to get to the next slide here, and that is going to be uh, just a quick history of the mansion itself. So it is often called the Queen of Queen Anne um, architecture. So Queen Anne architecture style consists of asymmetrical facades, dormers, uh, cross and double gables. Um, it's really ornate. Uh, it's got a ton of intricacies to it. Uh, what else do I want to add to this exterior, Queen Anne? Um, so it's, I'm sorry, so it's kind of inspired by Rococo. It's like a mix of Rococo um, aesthetic or architectural styles, um, which was sort of, um, Rococo was like 1700s, and then Queen Anne was like a revival and like a, a new spin on it in uh, the late 19th century. Uh, so close to the turn of the century coming into the 20th century. Cool. Um, so who the jo George Starrett was the owner and the builder of this house, um, and he built it for his wife, Anne Starrett. Uh, he was a contractor himself. Uh, both of them lived their lives out happily ever in this house, which is not something you think you would hear uh, with a haunted house. Like usually mm. it's got like a really dark side to it, but no, they lived happily in this gorgeous house that he built for his wife until, you know, th they, they passed. Um, and after their passing, uh, descendants lived in the house up until 1986. So, mm. oh, my apologies. I completely left this out. The house was erected in 1889. Mm. So nearly a hundred years of, of, um, Starrett's living in this house, descendants. And in 1986, um, an older couple purchased the property and turned it into the boutique hotel that it is today. Oh, cool. Um, yes. Yeah, so... Let's see. Um, so the new owners have done like a really, like if you, there's a couple YouTube videos actually. Um, yeah, there's a couple really good YouTube videos and we're going to include photos in here for you as well. A creative director will plop them in. Um, so the new owners really ensured that like they kept, they, they, they restored a lot of the historical features in the house. Um, they've really like kept a lot of the original elements um, and it is registered as like a historical building now um, within the town of Fort Townsend. Um, it's interesting. Um, it's, we're going to come to a fun fact at the end of this, but I just want to insert it now. Um, the house is gorgeous and it's on the market. Um, <laughs> it's been on the market for, I don't really want to give it away, but I just, you know, it's on the market and it's absolutely stunning. It's been so well preserved and so well taken care of, um, you know, we can only assume it hasn't been purchased because of the hauntings. Um, anyways. Yeah, we could see if we can maybe put on YouTube a poll 
of uh, what people think that it that the yeah the, what the issue is like or, what? or how much it how much the house costs or both oh well, as soon as I'm sure as soon as our viewers and readers and listeners hear how much the house costs that might change everything or yeah. how much it's been on the market for because it's very surprising especially in comparison to some of our house prizes here in Canada yeah um, cool so we can move on to the next section unless you want to do you have any questions you want to chat uh, about the history at all um. So, yeah, I, I did. So the, the Queen Anne or Queen Anne, mm -hmm. that's an architectural style. Then. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yep. So it's like, I'd say it's like an immersion of Victorian as well. Oh, okay. So it was, yeah, it's an immersion of a Victorian style. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm just excited to talk. I'm just getting excited to talk about the features. The architectural. I keep looking at the image before we, we start the podcast going like, we wanted to pose questions to you. Be like, you got to hold off. <laughs> yeah, I, I might not even know some of the answers. Like you might know some of them more than me. It's there. I learned a lot researching this as well, and this is like pretty similar to like my favorite architectural style. And you just constantly there's I have fun facts in here of things that I learned today while researching okay, this. Cool. So I'll share with Sweet. you guys. Cool. Okay. So next we're gonna go to the interior. Let's, let me see. Let me just do. Maybe I'll just do a little it. Little happy jack o' lantern. <laughs> Love that. Love that for us. So, um, next we're going to chat about uh, the interior of the mansion, which is very exciting for me. Um, and hopefully Jordan and hopefully all of you. Um, so, the house is a whopping thick, sick mouth. <laughs> 6,000 <laughs> square feet. Um, it boasts 11 bedrooms and 9 bathrooms. Um, it is uh, classified as a two-story, although there is a finished basement, which has been remodeled into a suite as well as like a finished story. It wouldn't be considered a story because of the, um, the, the vaulted heights. Yeah, the dorm, like the heights of the dormers and the vaults inside. But it is a finished two-bedroom suite that they now have on the level under the eaves. So for ease, we'll just... For eaves? Eaves? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> for ease, we will say it's four stories. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, there, the Dove Tower. So this is seen on the exterior. So like that front entry, that beautiful sort of tower mm. with, the, with the steep pitch gables. Um, so that encases... This is, I think, one of the biggest features of the house is, is that encases a floating spiral staircase. Um, and the reason that that is so, um, is so cool is because that was, you know, it was really uncommon to, to see a floating staircase in the turn of, in the turn of the century homes. Um, it's going to be a bit of an engineering nightmare to get that sorted out. Yeah. Um, Sorry, did you want to No, add? no, okay. I just, yeah. I, when I saw it, yeah, there's a lot of material that are just sitting on there and like... Yeah, like so much wood, right? Like yeah. it's like quality materials, heavy materials. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut And it. well, even just thinking about like the shaping of all that material, like how many, when, I don't know if you've ever seen when they, when a finishing carpenter is getting set up to do a curved set of stairs, how many clamps there are? No. It's I've insane. never seen it. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll see if we can find a picture of it. Cool. But like hundreds of clamps that they're like they just for every like four to six inches wow. uh, down the piece, they've got another clamp that's clamped to this like curved piece until they build it out, and then that would be like for the handrail, and then they got to do the the uh, stringer, and then ugh. Yeah, it'd be a lot of work and ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then also think thinking about doing all the math for all that. All the step, the stair calculations. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and also, um, in a lot of the photos, you can see like, like the curvature of like like the way that the staircase winds. Um, how did you, like, is it plaster and like lath? Like, right. what did they do with the drywall? You can see that it's sort of drywalled underneath the steps. But I don't understand how they did that without it compromising, like, the structure of the drywall. Like yeah, so like, it's probably it's lath and plaster. Cool. Like it, right? yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, if it's that old, it would be lath and plaster. Cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And it's probably, like, this thick. Yeah, so. probably, like, probably so much asbestos in that house if they were to, like, tear it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, because I don't know when they started put using asbestos, but... Yeah. Because I, I think it was, like, a... 
When was that? It was like 1960s? Was that probably, probably. 50s, so, 60s? Is yeah. when they started using materials with asbestos in it? Yeah, it would. It would. I. I yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. it's. Um, it's it's crazy to think about just like how much material just let alone went into that that set of stairs. There's more about the stairs. Oh, cool. So we're not finished with the stairs. So, Sweet. so good. I wanted to. There's talk also about that them. cool, um, like ornate item at the bottom. Oh, at the bottom. Sorry. Or oh, maybe it wasn't at the top. The, yes. uh, well, I just saw the image. So maybe. Yes. Yes. That's what we're okay. getting into cool. next. Cool. Sorry. So that to me seems like the key feature of the house. And okay. it's cool because like the staircase, you know, being a really beautiful architectural element leads your sight lines like right up to this. So inside that dove tower, um, a, it's a, let me see his name. It's, um, a renowned New York artist named Greg Chapman mm. designed a bunch of frescoes, which is like hand painted, um, I guess hand painted pictures of people, things on these ceilings. Um, and these frescoes were made in the image of Anne, the wife of the, oh. the, the homeowner. Um, so you'll see photos, um, You'll see photos in this, um, but that's that's not it. So there's still more. So this sort of the the frescoes within this this dove tower um, is surrounded by stained glass, and it is actually a solar calendar. Oh, so, cool! Yeah. So during the solstices, yeah. it it shines through different colors. I think it's sorry one. I think it shines through. Uh, the stained glass windows giving like an illumination of a ruby glow on these photos depicting his wife. Um, oh, wow. So like hecka romantic, yeah. like so romantic. He designed this, got in, you know, a world renowned artist to design this for his wife. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's like the coolest thing ever. That is. Cool. Yeah. So that is, I wow. think, the staircase leading up to those frescoes in that dove tower is like the biggest coolest feature in the house you know amongst a million other things that are awesome but really wanted to make note of that um and how amazing that is and how cool and thoughtful yeah um, and and to think about you know how much effort would have to go into that like gosh. to make sure that it worked and seemed yeah it yeah it, it's pretty cool yeah like, and like the level of detail that was able to be um, it, you know, my, my kind of first thought is like, we're always in such a rush now Totally. that nobody gets the opportunity to be able to, um, detail things out in that way yeah. and, 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 or even get the opportunity to have the privilege to, to plan that, that long in advance that something like that would come together. Totally. Like, all I can think is like if you made a mistake on those frescoes, those hand painted frescoes, you can't just control Z it. Or you, you know, you can't just draw one and then mirror it like we can, you know, with our, our CAD systems nowadays. It's like that's hard work. And I think it was erected over a span of six years. So I feel oh, like. So that's not yeah, even that so crazy. Which is not that. No, not that long for, for six thousand square. Yeah, six thousand square feet with yeah. that much detail. It's yeah, it's totally. Because so lots of these houses in those ages are taking like, you know, twenty year, ten, twenty years, and or they just never finish. Yeah, like they're just you know always building. Like the Winchester Mansion mm. never was finished. Um, and I guess I'll just tell you why really quickly. <laughs> it's because a medium told the owner that if she ever stopped building the house, she would die. Um, oh, that's the Winchester mansion though. That's not this mansion. You mm. can look into that. She had a lot of guilt because her husband, um, made rifles. Okay. Um, so she felt ghosts were going to come for her, come for her. And anyways, again, Winchester mansion, not the mansion we're talking about. Okay. So back to the interior. Okay. Yeah. So good. Um, so I went over the frescoes and the staircase with y'all. Um, let's see. Okay. So the interior is tastefully decorated in the embellished Victorian style. So this includes a lot of heavy drapery, um, really ornate moldings. Um, and some of the ceilings, just as we had discussed, um, are still hand painted. There's plenty of stained, or stained glass windows around the residence as well. 
Um, I thought this was kind of cool. Um, we'll show you some pictures as well. So the foundation of the tower um, has been turned into an elegant suite where five of its walls are exposed original brick. Um, so I really, really thought that was cool because that would have been considered, you know, not necessarily the nicest suite mm. to the residences. And now it's it's rented out as like a, quite a beautiful suite. Um, good. Yes. Um, so, and also the story under the eaves, um, which we did discuss. So under the eaves is going to be the roof, right? You're going to have like a ton of like open space underneath all those eaves and those really high pitches. So they put in a two bedroom suite. And it's beautiful because in that two-bedroom suite, they've got large skylights and you can see the port from those skylights. Mm. So you're getting tons of room, or sorry, tons of light in this whole building. Um, and it's just great how it was planned then to really like encapsulate the views of that, that port as well. Um, which I, that's going to lead me right into the exterior. Um, let's chat about the exterior. Okay. So, um, let's see. So the home is adorned with steep pitch dormers and beautiful double gables. And there's a couple of pictures here that we'll show you for reference. Um, you can see on the Dove Tower, I think it's eight. It's got eight sides to it. And every side has a, has a small little dormer with probably like a 15 out of 12 pitch on oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, um, let's see. Okay, and I found this interesting. As somebody who works um, with planning a lot, like a, like, like development and um okay so let's go back so I, the house is six thousand square feet and there's also like horse stables on this property too the property is only eight thousand square the lot is only eight thousand square feet large wow. so that's like so you know my janky calculations without knowing the area of like the the horse stables um means that the house itself is eating up 75 percent of the lot area right definitely not something you could pass through the city these days um i think the maximum they want to see you build on your lot is 40 percent nowadays mm. so um i thought that was just a cool nerdy fact for for designers designing now and having to work through development permits and stuff um is yeah is, it, when you say that it's interesting to to you know it, how and if that will change now that we're trying to get the these more affordable totally because like we're running out of land yeah and and we're looking for density yeah. and and you know the the land is a huge cost in that overall cost of the house and um and like i get you know the idea of having the yard and stuff like that um and that is important um but when people can't afford a house and, you know, a very large portion of it is the, the cost of land, it's like we got to figure out some solutions and Change. maybe that's uh, maybe that could be a solution. I don't know. Um, I mean, even like subdividing into smaller lots now, that could be an option. And yeah. And, yep, totally. Yeah. The, I, it, in, in my mind, I guess the first thing that I think of and it's maybe just because it's like, is the land barren if he gets the opportunity, which, you know, everybody's trying to make money, is that, you know, now that you get a smaller piece of land, but the, that cost hasn't, it's not like half the cost because you split the land in half. Totally. It's like... They've inflated it somehow. Yeah. Yeah, for you, sure. You got like a third off or a quarter off, but you got half the piece of land. For sure. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Because it's still the thing is, it still has to be like service. Mm -hmm. They still got to have the road. They still, so it's like, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's so many hurdles. You know, you think yeah. you think about it, and you're like, oh, that would help, and then you're like, oh, and this and this and this. It's like can, there's no real easy way to f fix this. You can do anything if you want to pay for it. Yeah, is sort of what I. I feel it's going with this too, like because you had said, what if the land's barren or something? If it's yeah. not, oh no, I'm talking about like land. I guess like a, 
the person that's selling the land, like a land baron, like somebody oh. that, like, like, say, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I, thought, like, I thought you meant like, no, the I'm talking baron, about like, like, they could pay to have that fixed. I feel like it would cost a lot. But. No, I'm saying like people that, that are holding large pieces of land. I, I'm just calling them like a land baron. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Totally wrong, <laughs> wrong context there. Okay. English. Um, yeah. I just thought it was. I just, let me just add to, like, some historical stuff, too. Yeah, that's right. I just learned that New York, um, Staten Island or whatever, is basically, it's, like, was created, it was infilled as, like, like people started buying water lots um, and with the stipulation that um, if they infilled these lots, they could build on this land. If they ever did. If they ever, and they did. So, oh. and they did. So basically, I think, um, I don't know geographically what New York is like, um, but where the um, the Twin Towers stood, um, they discovered like a whole boat underneath there and it, it, it people were just, you know, all their building materials, mm. they were just stacking and stacking and bi- building this island and building, building, building the Rubbish shore of New York out so they could have a lot Mm. Um, so I just, when you'd said barren land, I was like, they can make it work. They can, with enough money, they can probably make it work somehow. Um, <laughs> I, I have an interesting story <laughs> kind of, it's sort of similar to that. And it's, uh, I saw an image and it was like an English town and it was an old house that they built over top of a river. And then they didn't have, the stipulation was that the, the house, as long as it wasn't on the land, you didn't have to pay property tax. Okay. So this little, like, tower of a house sits over top of the river. As, like, it's like a bridge house. I gotta check this out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, good for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's good, good for them. It's like the most <laughs> janky little, like, tower house that look on top of a bridge. But the, And Jeez. they said, yeah. So that the person didn't have to pay taxes on their land. Wow, that's I've heard of people doing some pretty funny things to avoid taxes, but that's that's pretty up there. Yeah. I gotta check that out. That's yeah. cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Um, let's and whether see. that's true or not, that was just like a yeah a, a Facebook or <laughs> Instagram kind of. Yeah, I think when when I was looking at the New York one, that's something I learned off of Reddit. So. Um, let's see. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, take it with a grain of salt. I did do some deeper research and it is true. Um, but definitely look into it yourself, how they infill the tunnel land in New York. Um, okay. So let's see. So all over the exterior of the house as well, there's like ornate spindle work and gingerbread trim. So you'll notice in like some of the gables, how there's just like beautiful, like curvilinear, gothic looking, um, Uh, details in the gables I don't know how else to word it but just like a beautiful beautiful moldings beautiful details in these gables that were were handcrafted by these wood crafters and you just don't see like you just don't see that kind of intricate detail nowadays like just um so I also never knew it was called gingerbread trim it is Mm. actually called gingerbread trim oh cool I thought that was really cool yeah that is awesome um Oh, and this, none of this is included in any of the photos you'll find online, but there is a widow's walk on top of the roof of the residence. So for those who don't know what a widow's walk is, is it's a balcony on the roof of um, these old Gothic or Victorian houses. Um, and I think that they, I think the origin of the story is a widow, a death, you know, in the family. And she, and she, she haunts the widow's walk and you oh. see her walking up. Up and down the widow's walk. Not in this legit, not in this Star at Mansion story, but I think this is just the general oh, the... folklore of a widow's walk. And okay. why it's called a widow's walk. Um, yeah, and I think as for the exterior, that's about as far as I could get with research. Yeah, um, the cool. grounds, it includes horse stables, um, and there is access to the carriage house, which is attached to the residence itself. Mm. Um, but obviously in 18, you know, in the 19th century, it was used as a carriage house but they would bring the horses down there and would unload you know their whatever they were shopping for that day and their occupants and they would make their way onto the house into the house um, excuse me okay so oh sorry yeah do you have any questions about the exterior um yeah can we go to that image i just wanted yeah. to like yeah Let's um, see. boom yeah so boom. so the things that are like do you want to share the things that you thought were awesome about this image um, yeah, 
So I like that. That's the gingerbread trim that okay. I'm obsessed with. Yeah. These are those steep pitch dormers that I'm obsessed with. Um, and this is the Dove Tower, which is obviously encases that awesome staircase and those frescoes. Um, so there's, you see there, we've got like a double gable as well with tons of gable board detail. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, oh, that's as far as I'll go into what the I things like. That you yeah, like. Yeah, like there's a shit ton of things I like. Sorry, I don't know if we can swear. On the you call. can do whatever you want. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Um, but we'll keep it at that for now, sort of, with this picture. Yeah. Please, yeah. Which, no, what do you the, love? <laughs> well, the thing that I thought, it's mostly just like geeking out. And yeah. it was that when you look on, on top of all these windows, They've all got coverage. Oh yeah, I heard you. Every about that single earlier. window. Mm -hmm. So before we get there was we were using flashings and stuff like that. You had to figure out how you were gonna actually detail stuff instead of just slap it up there and hope that it 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 resists the weather. Resists the weather. Wow. So you actually have to build details in that would push the water away from the tops of areas that were gonna get affected by water. So they got all this nice detailing and these windows all got coverage this has got a little bit but still better than nothing wow. and uh yeah but now i guess you just give up on that and you just build a modern house and and hope that it just stays dry just hope for the best hope for the best cross your fingers and go this is a good detail look at it <laughs> Holy smokes, that's really cool info though. Like, uh, that's so cool that you pointed that out. And like, today I learned that. It's really well, it, it's, it's just, it just shows how, f how disconnected we've got from doing proper details that are gonna make your house last for this look. Yeah. And like, and you know, people want simplicity and straight and lot, like, like really clean lines and stuff like that. but. At what risk of like the house being there for a substantial period of time? Yeah. And what value does that really bring you um, when you have to rip off all the outside of your house because it fails in a, every twenty three years? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Sorry. So no, and like look at this house. It's been around for since eighteen eighty nine. Eighteen eighty nine. Because yeah. it has good details. Yeah. Doesn't have a crazy amount of like extra. Uh, you know, doesn't have any of these crazy tapes or, you know, there's probably some flashing there. Uh, probably like lead flashings, uh, which nobody's, well, like there's places that do that. We don't really use them here anymore. I don't know if that's because of like a health and safety right. issue or um, I think they do still do a little bit of it metal roofing, like um, commercial roofing okay, stuff. Okay, yeah, okay. And maybe it's because it's expensive. I'm not really sure, but... It's just, yeah, we don't see a lot of lead or copper. There's probably maybe some copper details I in bet. there too. Yeah. Um, so. I wonder what's kind of going on behind this dove tower and like how they deal with the water, sort mm -hmm. of backing up against that. I don't know. Um, hopefully we can find some, some like bird's eye views of the roof, but um, you know, if I design something like this, the first thing Jordan would probably say is, water's gonna collect in there and <laughs> so I'm, i like i like this like an, an old grandpa just, water's gonna collect in there. <laughs> no you're a good builder that's what you are um so that's fascinating i also want to kind of jump back on like how you know people want these like sleek simplistic um symmetrical modern houses and you know they don't want these beautiful details and stuff like this i it also simply is people want things done way faster nowadays yeah. like a i can't imagine the amount of time that i would need to plan a house like this mm. like whoever whoever would want to do this project with me you know we would have to give them the expectation like listen this is this is going to take a lot of tedious planning a lot of back and forth don't expect to be through the planning phase and the design phase for at least a year yeah. i feel like well um, yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot of, and and it really depends on how much freedom you're willing to to give to the team over like and and how historic or how like um 
particular you want to be for about sure. that detailing. For sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. It would be a long process because like when you think about just the level of detail that's going into just, uh, you know, like you look at this gable end yeah. and you, I know that, you know, we can hopefully zoom in and, sh and share a little bit more of that, but I can kind of get the gist of, you know, they've got all these, um, they've got some, I can't remember what they call that, but there's like arches that are holding up the post and beam work. I don't know um, it's not a, it's not a queen po or it's not a, no. Um, anyway, it's the, it, it, it's just, there's a, the amount of, you know, the joinery and stuff it, they're doing like interior, uh, your, the joinery that would be done on here would be better than the joinery you're getting from going out and buying a piece of furniture now. For sure. So it, it's like, it's just crazy to think about, uh, how much effort and, and then to think about the hand tooling and, and think of all the interior design, oh. going, like into all that elaborate woodwork and those built-ins and stuff like 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 the ex the exterior design like it's so much it's so much detail it's so much yeah it's, it, it sure is beautiful yeah and uh, I feel like I cut you off there I'm no so you didn't sorry. cut me off at all okay cool no uh -huh. I'm just ranting about how yeah. it's uh, nice to um, be able to see how different houses can be and mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully one day we get an opportunity to to uh, do a house like this for somebody and yes. and um, make sure that we do it right. Yeah. Um, so hopefully yeah. it'll be one of our houses. Yeah, so. that would be awesome. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. yeah, I would love to work with you to build this house for myself. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we've just sort of walked you through the location, a bit of the history, the interior, and the exterior of the Starrett Mansion. Um, and now we are going to talk about the hauntings and the entities. Um, I guess, seen in the mansion itself. Um, so unlike a lot of like haunted houses, this one, they seem like pretty nice entities. And um, so, so I'll just get right into it. Um, so the locals believe it's haunted by George and Anne. So these are the previous owners. George built it, Anne was his wife. It, she, the house was for her. Um, <clears throat> so obviously it's them who would want to leave that house. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, they lived in it happily until they died. Like I would haunt that place forever. <laughs> Um, so anyways, there's, um, we, I will cite some of the websites where we got this information from, but, uh, there's a couple entities, there's three entities that people have witnessed in this house, and I'm just going to describe them to you as I've read on the internet. Um, so first off is a red haired woman, um, and she often is seen acting as a hostess to the space. Her presence has been described as, uh, welcoming and peaceful, um, so people think that this is Anne, the owner of the house. You know, she's so, you know, she's hosting because she's so proud of the house. People say they often can just see her walking from room to room. And, you know, I've been, you know, I've been in my house after I clean it really well. I, I walk through my house just admiring mm -hmm. every room. And I have kids now, so that never happens. But, um, yeah, so, uh, so number one entity, Anne, the owner of the house, the house that it was or the woman that the house was built for. Um, the second entity is they think is George. Now, George has never been seen, but they have felt like a masculine presence in the house. And they don't say that it's been like a threatening or imposing um, presence, which I think is really great. Uh, you don't really hear about happy hauntings a ton. Mm -hmm. um, so the most um, active entity in the house, people tend to think, is their nanny. So they had a son named Edwin, and they had a nanny who took care of him for most of you know his upbringing. And in life, she was feisty, and it sounds like she was in the afterlife as well. <laughs> so guests have commented that when they are being critical or rude inside the house, they have felt a smack up on the back of their head. Um, so... I think people have determined that it's the nanny due to her sort of feisty behavior. However, I think it could be Anne too. When people mm. are burning your your decor, you know, she's whack. Yeah. No, that's my decor. My husband made this for me. Um, what else? Oh, and also the nanny. Um, so the nanny had her own quarters. Um, and it is said that uh, often she'll show you her reflection in her mirrored armoire in the, uh, or sorry, in her quarters. Um 
so again, I'll say it again. Um, I don't blame any of them for staying because the house is absolutely gorgeous. You can tell there's it's been taken care of. It's not decrepit. They're probably very proud of the house still and the new owners who have taken over and just restored and kept it, you know, in its original state. Um, uh, you got any questions about the ghosts? <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it, I think that it's 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 interesting to like. Oh. Oh, so, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no. The like the thinking about um, how you you would feel in those moments where you had if you had this entity come and and visit you and and what would make you f- feel in that moment to be like that this is here. Would is it like this um, instinctual feeling? Is it a you know, I guess that's more digging into like how um, real the possibilities of something like that are, and totally. and how that would af- affect you, or or would it be positive or negative in your like experience through life. For sure. Um, I think that it would probably be positive, even if it was scary. I think it would still be positive because it gives you this sense of like that you're you are. Um, Life's bigger than than you think it is, and it's, there's more mystery, yeah. which kind of makes this world feel a little bit more exciting and and wonderful. There's something else out there, kind of. I guess yeah. you know if you believe in that sort of stuff. Um, I think I read somewhere that uh, um, they would, you know, they could feel that the entities were there because the whole classic temperature would drop, despite mm. it being you know warm weather and things like that. Um, And only the two, so Anne and the nanny are seen, but George is not seen. So I think it's just more of a a feeling, like people who are kind of connected to, to believing those things could just feel his, his masculine presence in the house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, um. Yeah. I wonder what, yeah, that's interesting to like understand what a male, male entity would feel like compared to female and. Totally. And how, like. At what point of your hauntings do you then be able to determine how that would be? Or are you a person that that is... Yeah, you'd have to be more connected to the world than others, I think, for that to be possible to know if it was male or female. Totally, like medium or clairvoyant or something, mm-hmm. for sure. I've, I've always believed in ghosts and other worlds and stuff, but I've never... Experienced I've it. never experienced anything, even though I'm like, come at me! Like, I've never experienced anything. So it's probably, I mean, I probably shouldn't wish for that. But um, it's going to lead me, so the haunting is going to kind of lead me into the last um, fun fact, sort of last slide of our podcast. So this house has been on the market for 14 years. And uh, its asking price is only $1.5 million American. So let's just like put that into perspective. Like I have some family members who just bought a pretty fairly new single family dwelling, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, nice ocean view, sort of in the Hammond Bay area. And I think they just paid under a million for it. This is just like your run of the mill, single family Easy dwelling. Easy box type situation. Yeah, like it's, you know, you've got your... Your hardy siding, you've got your your shaker doors, just, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. A nice, beautiful house, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing ornate like this. So just those two price, price comparisons, like $1.5 million versus, you know, just a five-bedroom, three-bathroom, single-family dwelling for just under a million here. So, I mean, those hauntings must be deterring people. Why hasn't it sold? And why yeah. hasn't it been on the, or why has it been on the market for 14 years? Um, and one of the YouTube videos um, up talking about the house that I was looking at, they did a comparable to another historic house um, within the area, and it was listed for 1.3 million. And it was like it was, I think, four thousand square feet smaller than this one so oh yeah something's going on there so yeah yeah something is uh something so we're interested to hear if you have any ideas after taking a look at the house itself as to why it won't sell um and if you go we'd love to hear your story or if you've gone yes yeah please call 
uh, write it, write a message on the YouTube or wherever else you can find us. And we'd love to chat with you uh, about that. That's super cool. There's a couple of fun facts that I'll talk about. Um, and then we wrap it up. Um, so like I just said, um, it's been on the mansion for 14 years, currently priced at 1.5 million American. So that's more, but, uh, um, so uh, this I learned today when I was looking up the dove tower. So I'd never heard the term dove tower. You did I. Yeah. So there's a difference. I always use turret. That's mm. what I would call that. Yeah. Like a round or cylindrical part of, of the structure. So there, there is a difference between the two. So a turret is actually, and it's been misused so much in my field, I think. So a turret architecturally is defined as, um, it is built out of the structure of the house. So sort of imagine a wall and the turret goes like this. So it's protruding out of the wall. It mm. does not have foundation in the ground. Oh, okay. So it's putting... It's Some putting strain on. strain on the structure. It has no foundation. Um, so that's a turret. So a dove tower is a structure that goes into the ground. It mm. has a foundation. Um, so I just found that bit of uh, information really interesting. That is cool. Yeah, and my whole like life of design, I've always called it a turret. So I thought that was really cool. Um, a dove tower, which I think sounds beautiful. It like, does. It... Release doves out of those stained glass windows. Oh, yeah. That's such a magical story, too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, this one you're going to like. This I saved the best for last for you, Jordan. It was the first house in the Pacific Northwest to have forced air heating oh, cool. installed. Yeah, that's super so cool. Like yeah, that. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That, yeah, trying to, um, I, I guess it probably would have been on for like an oil burner or something like that. Yeah. 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 That's super cool. Yeah. Thought Sweet. You, thought you'd like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that wraps it up for the research I conducted on this, uh, mansion. Um, is there anything you want to go over or any questions you have or, um, hmm. No, I, I'm just, I, I'm just happy that, uh, we were able to have some fun today. Yeah, it was awesome. And get to like you know, branch out, and but still is a little bit to do with what we do. and Totally. Um, I learned a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like, I learned a ton from this. Um, I'm glad you had so much fun with it. It was great. Yeah. It was awesome, and I hope to do it again. Next year, we'll, we'll have another... Spooky event. Spooky mansion. <laughs> um, please do, yeah, write in if you have anything to share about this mansion. Or like any other cool hauntings you've experienced in, I don't know, regards to architecture. I mean, you can just tell us about hauntings. <laughs> We're cool with that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think uh, I think that's all for tonight. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you everybody for coming to watch Better Building with Buck. Yeah. And uh, bye for now. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Thanks. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. Sweet. What time nice is it? Awesome. As we do, awesome. my hands are so clammy. They're like. <laughs>